Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. 
I want to invite each of you to meet me here at this altar for our opening prayer as we sing, Crown Him, Crown Him, Lord of all. Crown Him, Lord. We're going to crown and worship him. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. Worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we worship you. We worship you in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you for bringing us to your house one more time. 
thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies, your keeping power of our lives, your thoughts toward us, your favor. We want to thank you for all of your many, many benefits unto us. What shall we render unto you, Lord, for all of your benefits unto us? Grant that we will take the cup of salvation, call on the name of our God, pay our vows in the midst of the congregation of the righteous. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for another Lord's Day morning for another opportunity that we have to worship you in the beauty of holiness and in spirit and in truth. Lord, we thank you for bringing us through another week. Day after day and night after night, hour after hour, moment after moment and second after second. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We honor you. We magnify you. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, bless the name of our God. Now, Lord, we invite your presence here today. Bless us as we worship you in Jesus' name. Open thou the windows of heaven. Let your glory fill this house. Hey, glory to God. I pray that you'd meet every need here today. For, Lord, there are various and sundry needs here. Some need one thing and some need another but thou art able to meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Pray that you'd heal those that are sick, loose those that are bound, set free those that are captive, save those that are lost in the name of Jesus Christ. Send revival, send renewal, send an awakening, oh God. Bless, we pray, all that is done and said here today. Every song that is sung, every prayer that is prayed, every word that is preached, every gift that is given, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. For thou art the potter and we are the clay. Mold us and make us after thine own will while we are waiting, yielded and still. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name forevermore. Not only in this house, Lord, but we pray for all of those that will gather to worship you in this city, state, nation, and around the world. Be thou magnified. Be thou glorified. Bless us in all that we do and say that we might bring glory and honor to you. For all of these things we ask you for and thank you for in that mighty name, that wonderful name, that never failing name, that name above every name, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the Holy Spirit, which is present in this place already. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing worth more that can ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Mm. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of love where my heart begins comes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord. Holy Spirit say Holy Spirit you are welcome come flood come flood
us experience the glory of God. Cause let us become, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience, let us experience the glory of your presence. Let us become.
into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless, bless his name. I don't know about you, said, but I feel good this morning because not good is thy faithfulness, but great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My, 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 my. We talked about yesterday that God is already moving. He said, and all we need to do is to join in on that move. And you know what that means? That God is already working it out in your favor. And we just ought to come and just praise him as if. Y'all know what an as if praise is. As if you've already got your blessing. You need to praise him as if you've already got your breakthrough. Praise him as if you've already got your healing. And as if praise. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I said, but y'all seem to have come to want to lift up the name of the Lord on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you can, I, I want you to try to be seated. Try to be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a scripture that I read this morning, and, uh, and God is just leading me to, uh, to read it uh, on today. It's a word for somebody in the house so that just says, Behold, I am doing a new thing, a new thing. Now it springs forth. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? And I feel that it is being perceived in the house today. He is doing some new things in this house today, for he will make a way said in the wilderness and make rivers in the deserts and i just give god the praise the glory and the honor for his mercy his favor and his grace dominion power and glory for the many works wonders and miracles that he performs in and around us on today come on the praise team y'all just mm, my 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 and i don't know if y'all really even pay attention to the band but y'all praise them all by yourself. My, my. We thank you for it. The music of ministry, we thank you for it. Said So we want to go ahead and welcome those that are here in person as well as those that are streaming online. We are glad that you are here. Come on and just give yourself a hand clap of praise just for being able to make it here on today. Hallelujah. We welcome you to Bible Way Ministries International. Just, we just say the way, just the way. We want to welcome you to the way for our vision, our mission, and our purpose is loving God, loving people, and making disciples. And by loving people to Christ and discipling souls to maturity. We believe that the only thing worse than being lost is being lost, but having no one looking for you. For Jesus himself said, I came to find, save, and restore the lost. And our ministry focus is that each of us, each of us, developing uh, our growing list of friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, co-workers, enemies, and strangers, what we call our Francis list, and those who have strayed, utilizing the bless strategy to connect and share our stories of what Christ has done in our lives. And God has given each believer a spiritual gift to bless others and our hope is that you will experience the love, the joy, the peace, the warmth, and a welcome here today. And as we worship, you will have the opportunity to come home, to come home and become a part of God's family and this local church. And to all our guests worshiping in person, we appreciate you completing a guest card in the lobby. If you have not received it, we'll make sure that we get you one. And those online, please inbox inbox your contact information so that we may personally thank you for worshiping with us today. And finally, we want to keep you abreast of all events and activities, so just, uh, just download the Bible Way Ministries app. And again, we thank you for being here today. Amen, amen, and amen. And uh, we are going to prepare the, uh, the sanctuary, prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls to receive uh, the Lord's Supper, uh, Holy Communion. If you did not receive your elements coming in uh, to the sanctuary this morning, please just raise your hand and we'll make sure that our deacons and ushers uh, get you. We have one here, two here. Want to make sure that we get you your elements.
partake in this, uh, in this holy ordinance so that we will not forget and always remember, said the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which accomplished the forgiveness of our sins and our salvation. So we want to invite born again, saved, and baptized believer, believers of all ages who have placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord to uh, join us uh, in a perfect congregation of believers who are saved by the sacrificial blood of Jesus Christ and the grace of God, who in obedience to the word of God is seeking the continual forgiveness, the continual forgiveness of our sins. And we invite all believers to partake of this ordinance and sacrament of Holy Communion, which Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and who gave his life for us, left on record for us to regularly observe. In 1 John 1, 5 and 9, it reads, this message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, which cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cl cleanse us uh, from all wickedness. The familiar King James Version in 1 John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, said he is faithful, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we can just take our moments just to bow our heads and just ask God to forgive us any sins known and unknown just for this moment and just thank him for this opportunity to once again be cleansed. First Corinthians eleven twenty three through thirty two reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner he also took the cup when he had supped, saying, uh, This cup is the new testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it. In remembrance of me for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show the Lord's death till he come wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord but let a man examine itself so that uh, let him eat this bread and drink of this cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body but this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we could judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. If you can, please stand with your elements in hand. For Holy Communion is not a prize for the perfect, but a powerful medicine and nourishment for the weak. So this is the bread, his body, that was broken for you. So this cup of the New Testament of the blood, and as we eat, we eat unto him. And now we take the cup, for this is the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. all God's children said, Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. I know it
attention for a video announcement. The Lord Bible Way Ministries. Our vision, mission, and purpose is loving God, loving people, and making disciples by loving people to Christ and discipling souls to maturity. June 1st, first Saturday pastor's prayer. Join Pastor Norwood for early morning prayer and discipleship, Saturday, June 1st at 7 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. June 9th, Widows and Widowers Worship Experience. The Time Grief Program invites all widows and widowers to worship together and receive special commemorative gifts. Please register on the BWMI app by May 28th. June 10th through 13th, Food Bank. The food pantry serves hundreds of families monthly. We appreciate your volunteer support, whether you help to sort boxes or you provide a generous donation. We're here for our community, June 10th through the 13th. June 13th through 15th, Georgia Southern Diocese Meeting. Recapture what was stolen, Proverbs 631. Bishop Russell Gordon invites all Georgia Southern churches to the 79th Spiritual Empowerment Conference in Sandersville, Georgia. See Mother Manning or call the church office for more details. June 16th, Father's Day Observance. Let's celebrate fathers. Invite your father or a father and their family to worship with you on Sunday, June 16th. To participate in the Father's Day tribute video, please send photos of your father to BibleWayAtlanta at gmail.com by June 5th. June 2nd and June 16th, S4C Youth Sundays. Do you have students, grandchildren, nieces, or nephews? Don't forget to bring them to church on June 2nd and 16th for S4C Youth Services in the Fellowship Hall at 10 a.m. June 23rd, Graduation Sunday. It's the time of year where we celebrate our graduates and scholastic achievements. High school graduates may also apply for the Robin G. Norwood Scholarship. Please use the BWMI app events calendar slash graduation Sunday or pick up a QR code to submit your achievements by June 8th. June 30th, Missional Sunday. It's Missional Sunday. This is your opportunity to invite friends, relatives, acquaintances, and neighbors to join you in service. Wear your comfortable clothes and stay tuned for more information. The following are a few gentle reminders. October and Pastor Appreciation Month is right around the corner. Please feel free to begin paying your love offering. We're updating our church membership database, Servant Keeper, that we may have accurate and up-to-date information. So stay tuned. Lastly, Vacation Bible School is coming soon. This year's theme is Suited and Booted. Let's prepare for war. July 15th through 19th, 2024 at 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Volunteers are always needed and registration is on the BWMI app. These have been our Bible Way ministry announcements. We are excited about all the new things coming ahead, so please be sure to stay tuned. And in closing, may I remind you of our memory verse of the month. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this, day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. Enjoy the rest of service. Anybody glad that he died for us? That he didn't stay dead, but he rose with all power in his hands. We invite you to worship with us on today.
Somebody give God praise in this house today. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. If you know that Jesus Christ hung, bled, and died, was buried, but early on Sunday morning, look at somebody and say, he got up with all power in his hands. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give God glory. Bless the Lord in this house. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt. Come on and give God some praise. Give God some glory. You've already been doing it. And he is worthy of our praise. As you look up and down your rows, you look front and back, would you just greet somebody with a smile and welcome them? Amen. Wave at them. Acknowledge their presence. And then we want to acknowledge our streaming audience can we make some noise for those who are streaming with us today across the globe, across the nation, across the metro? We can do better than that. Come on, let's make some noise for them. If you are streaming, we ask you to put a comment, put a, something in the chat to let us know where you're watching from and give us some love even as we give God love for you. Let's give God praise for them one more time and thank God for them. And can we acknowledge our S4C, our Soldiers for Youth, a worship experience taking place next door in the fellowship hall. Let's make some noise and give God praise for our children, our youth, our young people, elementary, middle, high school students. We are grateful and thankful for Minister Shannon and the team that volunteers regularly with them. Can we thank God one more time for them this morning? I'm grateful for all of the teams that are working this morning. The open hand, can you thank God for those who welcomed us, greeted us? seated us as we came and we can do better than that come on and thank god for them i thank god for the three m media team the digital ministry team they're reaching out to those who are streaming we thank god for this choir this praise team pastor jason brown our worship leader these musicians thank god for the intercessors this morning and we started a brand new sunday school quarter can we thank god for a new sunday school quarter we thank god for all of them and we celebrate with all of those who are celebrating milestones. I want to just take a moment and acknowledge the 17th wedding anniversary of our organist, Brother Andre, his wife, Sister Dorothy. Would you stand? She's seated all the way over to my left, to your right. This is one of the best organists on this side of heaven. You ought to thank God for 17 years. Somebody give God praise. It is no secret what God can do, what he has done for them, he can do for you. Amen. I thank God for Elder Will serving this morning. We thank God for our apostle. Come on and give God praise for all of the ministers in the room. Just before the word of God, I have a letter I want to share with you. It says, hello, Bishop. My name is Cavis Ward. I am a friend of Minister Candace Durden. We were childhood classmates. I... I would like to write to you, and I told her I would write to you to thank you for your obedience to calling, in your calling and spreading God's word. I have been able to watch online services at Bible Way, and I'm thankful how the Holy Spirit shows up and shows out week after week. Somebody give God praise if you're a witness. He says, I attended for about several years until I was transferred six months ago. He says, uh, at this time, Candace has shared a number of growth notes with me. How many of you know what the growth notes are? They're available on the app. That's how you can follow the message and study. She says, I, he says, I plan on attending and joining God's church at Bible Way. I'm an ex-drug addict who's been clean and sober for eight years. And he says, the question I want to ask you is, number one, how as a man of God do you daily slay responsible? How do you stay responsible to your calling? How do you deal with family and friends who has not accepted Jesus and they see the Holy Spirit more in your life. Thanks for your time, and thanks for your prayers. 
for all of us in here at Walker State Prison. P.S. Every sermon, I find myself looking straight forward. Ha, ha, ha. Now, some of you all know what that means. Sometimes when I'm preaching these difficult points, I say, if you look straight forward, they won't know I'm talking to you. Somebody thank God for Cavis Ward, incarcerated, following us. Thank you, Minister Candace, for connecting us. And certainly, we will write him back and stand. Come on and give God praise for Cavis. Come on and thank God for that letter. And of course, we remember Brother Travis Denson as well as others that may be in your life and your family who are incarcerated. They may be locked up, but they're never locked out. Somebody ought to thank God for the grace of God, the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God. If you have your scriptures this morning, just one verse of scripture, the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 18. I want to ask you to stand as we read it together. Ephesians chapter number 5. Verse 18, it's easy, straight, simple this morning. Somebody say Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. As you stand, if there's anybody around you without their phone, their Bible, would you put a smile on your face and invite them to read this one verse? I hope you could memorize it, underline it. Go home and read it. Read what came before it. Read what comes after it so you can get the context. You can meditate on it. When you have found Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, say, Pastor, I got it. I say, hold up while I find it. Okay, I heard somebody. I'm holding. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Let's read it. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled. Come on, look at somebody and say, neighbor, the Bible says, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Lord, we need a word this morning. Some of us need to be filled. <laughs> we are empty. We are fair to Midland. We have pulled up to the filling station. And we don't want to get drunk with wine, but we want to be filled with your Spirit. And we ask you to do it all over again in Jesus' name. And the church said, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Boy, you want to get an argument started, just start talking about drinking in the church. Just start talking about alcohol. A whole lot of folks start looking straight. <laughs> My God, drinking us. We don't want to talk about that. Some of you can't even understand me because you, well, I'm not going to even go there. But the Bible says don't be drunk with wine. It didn't say don't be drunk. It says with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. You ought to be filled, but with the right Spirit. Somebody say the Holy Spirit. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. I tell you, if we were to talk about this, we could get into some heated arguments about what the Bible says and what the Bible doesn't say. I have heard the Bible maligned and misquoted. I have heard people read and make up their own verses, their own truth. They skip over the verses where Jesus turned the water to wine and Paul said, take a little wine for you. Okay, that's, somebody didn't even know that was in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Some people don't realize in the time in which Jesus lived, wine was safer to drink than the water. But I won't take time. I would digress. I want to go further with us and tell somebody, you need to pull up and fill up. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the word that they look at somebody and say, pull up and fill up. That's the word. I, I wonder if there's anybody here today who will say, Pastor, I am filled with the Spirit. I can't feel. If there's somebody here honest enough to say, Pastor, I came with my tank half full. I came with my light on E, and I, I need to be filled up. Just about everybody listening to me has a cell phone or some type of digital device. And one of the common experiences of cell phone ownership is running out of power. Anybody ever run out? I mean, you're in the middle of a conversation, and you hear these little beep, 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 and it goes dead. Anybody ever had that happen? It's common to be engaged in a conversation, sometimes an argument, sometimes you're in the heat of it, and suddenly 
You hear those few short beeps before the conversation abruptly comes to an end. Your cell phone has died. Now, this power failure can be life-threatening in an emergency circumstance because in desperate moments, you don't want or need your digital device to die because it has run out of power, especially when power is available and the device is functional. You know, you could have brought a backup battery. You could have plugged it in and charged it. You let it slip your mind, or you just thought it would last a little bit longer. And yet, in order to avoid this calamity, our devices, here it is, must be plugged in. Somebody say, you got to plug it in. On a daily basis, you need to recharge. And in the same way, every person of faith, look at somebody say, you too. Every person of faith needs daily to be plugged in and recharged with the Holy Spirit because we never know what demands and what difficulties will be made of us between the rising and setting of the sun. Can I get a witness in the house? We all need to be filled. The story is told of a door-to-door -to -door salesperson who was touring the countryside selling vacuum cleaners with a rather unorthodox high-pressure sales tactic. He would ring the doorbell, and as soon as they would open the door, he would throw in a bag of dirt on the carpet and let it literally explode in people's living room. And to calm his would-be customers, he would immediately begin his sales pitch saying, no need to worry. I've got the best vacuum cleaner ever made. It will suck up anything and everything. Matter of fact, I'm so confident in its promise that I promise that whatever it does not suck up, I will personally suck it up myself. Well, he did that at one farmhouse, and the elderly lady who lived there immediately began walking toward the kitchen and came back with a spoon and a fork. And the man asked, well, what's that for? And he, she said, well, you better start eating because I don't got no power. Mm. somebody got it and somebody didn't. But don't miss the message that a lack of power, somebody say a lack of power, can present all kinds of problems because we need power in order to get the job done. What job? Whatever God has called us to do. Look at two or three people and say we need power. That's on a physical level, an emotional level, a mental level, and especially a spiritual level. Somebody say spiritual. You cannot do spiritual work without spiritual power. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Why don't you help me testify to somebody? Look at somebody and say, neighbor, you cannot do spiritual work without spiritual power. You cannot live for God, talk to God, love God, serve God, preach God, sing God, teach God, here it is, without God. You cannot forgive without spiritual strength. That's why some of us are sitting here right now with high blood pressure because we can't forgive. We need help. You cannot give without spiritual assurance. That's why some of us hold on to it. You cannot love without spiritual assurance. You cannot preach without spiritual power. You just can't do it. You need to be, I need to be, we need to be daily recharged with the overflowing power of God's spirit. We need to be filled up. Somebody say filled up. The strength to live the Christian life comes from the one who gave us life, from the Lord, through the agency of the Holy Spirit. We've been really focusing on this person of the Holy Spirit. The great author A.W. Tozer said, any tiny work that God has ever done through me and through my ministry for God dates back to that hour when I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Anybody remember when you were filled? when you were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Similarly, as we read the biographies of those who have gone before us to discover that their lives were changed and changed as they were daily filled with the Spirit. And anyone who knows anything about the fullness of the Spirit in their own lives wholeheartedly understands that living one day in the Spirit is worth more than a thousand days on our own. Can you look at somebody and say, you need help, you need power. Because much of what is attempted without God's spirit is futile, while even a little attempted with God's spirit is fruitful. Without the spirit, our best efforts are barren, but with the spirit, even our broken efforts are blessed. Somebody ought to thank God that God blesses our efforts. Nothing is more essential for the Christ follower than being filled with and recharged daily by the Holy Spirit's power. And yet the sad truth is that many 
who love God and who have trusted Jesus Christ for salvation know little of the fullness of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And many more are miserably misled, misinformed about the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit for at least three reasons. If you're taking notes, write this down. Sometimes it's because of ignorance. We just don't know. Sometimes it's because of indifference. We just don't care. And sometimes it is, watch this, it's because of iniquity because we have been wrong so long that we just prefer the way we're doing it. We're living life that we love and loving the life that we live and as a consequence, missing out on power. Somebody say, you're missing out on power. The power of the presence and the possibilities through the Holy Spirit. And in our text, somebody say, in Ephesians 5. There is one verse that stuck there to give us instruction. It says, do not be drunk with wine, which will ruin you, but be filled with the Spirit. And it's important to get the definition right. The terminology here is filled and not baptized. Can we go to Bible study? What is the difference between being filled with the Holy Spirit and being baptized with the Holy Spirit? Let's have Bible study. Mm hmm the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a phrase used to describe the experience of the Holy Spirit at the start. Somebody say the start of our relationship, but never as a subsequent experience. Once you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit by the baptizer who is the Holy Spirit, look at somebody and say, you've already been baptized. Mm -hmm. Just as water baptism puts upon us as water as an external symbol of what we pray is happening internally, so the baptism of the Holy Spirit was put upon the church, here it is, on the day of Pentecost collectively, and we identify with and we experience that baptism individually in the moment of our regeneration. Anybody been baptized in the Holy Ghost? Come on, you ought not be shamed. Show some sign. I've been baptized. Yes, I've, been, I've got the sign. Yes. Say it plain, preacher. The moment we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we believe that in that second, the Holy Spirit, who is not just the baptism, but who is the baptizer, baptizes us, covers us in, and empowers us to confess Jesus as Lord. I'm in the book. I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Literally, the Holy Spirit immerses us in the body of Christ, the family of faith. We go down into the body as if we're a sinner, but we come up a saint. Somebody ought to thank God. May not be all that I should be, but thank God. Sometimes the name goes on before the quality goes in. Mm. Some of you are old enough to remember what I call the Zenith television commercial. They used to have a commercial decades ago. It used to say that, that the quality goes in before the name goes on. And I think about that sometimes, and I think about the fact with children of God, it's different. Sometimes the name goes on before the quality goes in. You're, you're a saint, but sometimes you act like an ain't <laughs> because you're living beneath your privilege. You're not living with the power to live for God. And so with that understanding, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not a second blessing as some Pentecostal theology teaches, as if the first blessing was not adequate because the Holy Spirit, that is, the person of the Holy Spirit, the third person in the Godhead, some use the word Trinity, is the baptizer. I repeat, not the baptism, but the baptizer. So we are baptized, not into the Holy Spirit, but we are baptized, here it is, by the Holy Spirit. Somebody say baptized by and we are baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. That's why we sing sometimes, you cannot join in, you must be born in. And before Pentecost, this word baptism was used prophetically. In Mark chapter 1, verse 8, John the Baptist said, I have indeed baptized you with water, but he, meaning Christ, will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. During his ministry, Jesus defined it more precisely, and he said to his disciples, you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence, not many days from now. After Pentecost, the word baptized was used retrospectively as in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, where Paul taught, by one spirit we have, past tense, we have been baptized into the one body. Somebody ought to thank God for your baptism. Well, when did it take place? On the day of Pentecost, for the church collectively, in the moment of our regeneration, for us personally and individually. And the more I mature, the more gratitude I have 
for this church that God permitted to shape my life. That is where I was exposed to, and I learned about the person of the Holy Spirit. That was not a great focus necessarily on hermeneutics, the study of the interpretation of Scripture. That was not necessarily a great focus on homiletics, the art of preaching and writing sermons. But when apostles preached, things happened in the hearts and the lives of people. Bodies and hearts were healed, souls were saved, and lives were changed. And the point is, today, we're not lacking ability. We are lacking anointing. We are not lacking in degrees. Some of you all have degrees. We're lacking in divinity. We are not lacking in educated. We've got a whole lot of educated folk. We are lacking in empowerment. Some of us are good at impressing people, but we struggle to influence people. A preacher of yesteryear, Charles Spurgeon, once said, the great king, immortal, invisible, the divine person called the Holy Spirit, it is the spirit who quickens the soul. It's only as we are filled with God's spirit that pain will be bearable, that trouble will be endurable, tragedy will be transformable, time redeemable, mountains movable, work doable, justice achievable, sickness curable, goals reachable, victory attainable, and the church viable, Christ visible, and all things possible. Somebody ought to give God some praise. It's essential that those of us who profess to love God and serve God be filled with and recharged on a daily basis with the Holy Spirit. But how? I'm going to turn the corner and we're going home. How are we to be filled with and recharged daily with the Holy Spirit? You just said pull up and fill up. How do we pull up and fill up? I'm glad you asked. It's right there in the text. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, we are commanded, not suggested, but we are commanded. Look at somebody say, we are commanded to be filled. The text is in the Greek language, the imperative sense, be filled with the Spirit. The, these words are not a sacred suggestion. It's a concrete command. Being filled is not something that we are to ponder and pray about and consider or seek to do if and when we feel like it. Because it's a good thing to do. Being filled with the Spirit is still a command. It's an issue of obedience with blessings for compliance and consequences for defiance. And notice that this command is personal. Look at somebody say, this is personal. One author put it like this, what lies behind us and before us are tiny matters compared to the power of the Holy Spirit within us. The Holy Spirit convicted and called us to faith. The Holy Spirit indwelled us the moment that we believe. The Holy Spirit baptized us into the family of faith. The Holy Spirit sealed us with salvation. The Holy Spirit empowers us to witnesses in Judea, Jerusalem, and the other most parts of the earth. The Holy Spirit gifts and anoints us for service and ministry. Therefore, each of us is to be filled with the Holy Spirit on a personal level. Look at somebody say, it's personal. Galatians 5.25 says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. It's personal. So if I'm commanded to be filled and I'm not filled, I'm living in defiance to what the Word of God says. Let me illustrate it. Some of you know about Airbnbs, the space sharing service that permits you to put your home or your spaces that you own online for other people to rent or to occupy. And when people rent your space to occupy it and to enjoy it, they're not permitted to make substantial changes to it for one reason, and the reason is they don't own it. It's still yours. Likewise, the Holy Spirit is in the same position in our lives. The Holy Spirit may have amazing potentialities and possibilities for you, but the Holy Spirit will not release any of those possibilities and potentialities until you yield ownership of yourself and your soul to the Savior then yield to the Spirit's influence and work in your life on a daily basis. D.L. Moody said, never think that Jesus commanded a trifle nor dared a trifle with anything that he has ever commanded. In other words, what Jesus asked us to do is a major thing. Being filled with the Spirit of God is a command, not a craze. Being filled with the Spirit of God is not a minor thing. It's a major thing. Look at somebody say, it's major. And this command is personal, but stay with the text and you will see that it's also plural. The spiritual imperative, be filled, is not just intended for one of us, but for all of us. Look at somebody say, for everybody. 
whether being filled with the Spirit is mentioned in scriptures, whenever it is talking about the church, the average person may think that it applies to the elite, to the elect, to some people, to the deacons, to the missionaries, to the pastors, to the preachers, when in actuality, look at somebody, it applies to all of us, to the masses and to the multi, all of us. Yes, all of us. Remember on the day of Pentecost, the text testified that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 4.31 says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. On each occasion, every person present was filled. Don't miss this. Can you imagine what would happen each week if all of us were filled with the Holy Spirit day by day, week by week, month by month, year after year? We would come here and every time we came together, it would be a Holy Ghost explosion because you can't feel, I can't feel. And if we weren't filled, we'd pull up and fill up. Somebody give God some praise. So let me ask you, how many of you today desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit? All right, I see those two hands. Let me ask you again, how many of you today <laughs> desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit? How many of you have a hunger in your heart to be filled with the Spirit of God? How many can identify with the lyric of that song, Lord, you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. You pour out your spirit, I'll open up inside. Fill me up, Lord. <laughs> Fill me till I overflow, I want to run over. We are commanded to be filled. But notice, this is my last point. We are to continue to be filled. That's why sometimes we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We need to come to church whether we feel like it or not, because sometimes we are out of spiritual fuel and we don't even recognize it. You know, sometimes we, we're dragging and we don't even realize, I, I need to pull up so I can fill up. I need God to fill me up. There's another verse of scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 that says, we have this treasure. What treasure? The treasure of the Spirit of God. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And what's interesting about that verse to me is that he mentions, if you read that entire passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, that we have this treasure, but we need to be refilled and refilled. And I looked at that thing and I studied it and I wondered to myself, why is it we need to be filled and refilled? It's because we leak. <laughs> Look at somebody say, we leak. Monday happens, and Tuesday happens, and Wednesday happens, and Thursday happens, and Friday happens, and Saturday happens, and life happens, and we leak. That's why we need to pull up to fill up. We are not just to be filled, but we are to continue to be filled. In, in the Greek text, the verb rendered here is the present progressive tense, meaning that we are to be filled, yes, and watch this. We are to keep being filled. Repeat this after me. Once I'm filled... I'm to keep being filled. You almost got it. Once I'm filled, I'm to keep being filled. I'm going to pull up and fill up. Mm -hmm. New Testament scholar Hanley C.G. Mole translates this word as fullness habitually. This is not a once and for all matter. This is an ongoing daily issue. Bible translator John Phillips was correct in saying that most of the Holy Spirit's ministries to believers are once and for all sovereign acts of God. The indwelling, the baptism, the sealing, the earnest deposit. We talked about this last week. The gifts of the Spirit are in no way dependent on us. They are wrought in us by the Holy Spirit at the time of our regeneration. They are irreversible. They are irrevocable. Some of you heard that verse that the callings and gifts of God are without repentance. God will not take them back. But the filling of the Holy Spirit, however, is another matter. The difference is that being filled with the Spirit is a command that is to be obeyed continually. It's not eternal. It's every day. Preach, Pastor. That's worth writing down. It is not eternal. It's every day. Somebody say every day. In other words, it has to be, re Lord, fill me up. Lord, fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. We need to pray it. We need to believe it. We need to ask it because we need it daily. Daily, we need the Holy Spirit's presence and power in our lives to enhance and empower our eternal relationships. That's what Paul is addressing here in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. He says, speaking, here's how you do it. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody, 
in your hearts to whom? To the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever noticed that the music you listen to comes out as you hum, as you go throughout the day? You end up humming a tune, humming a melody, singing the lyrics of a song. That's why you got to watch what you let in your ear gate and your eye gate. Can I preach this? Because we used to have a, a phrase back early in the days of the computer, junk in, junk out. Whatever you put in is going to come out. If you want to be filled, you've got to do the things that Paul instructs us to do here. He says, speak to yourselves and what? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You've got to be in the word of God. You've got to immerse yourself in the praises of God. Then he says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord. It's the spirit of God who empowers our relationship with God. The Holy Spirit puts songs on our lips, music in our hearts, prayers in our spirit, and thanksgiving in our mind. Do I have a witness in here? Also, we need the Holy Spirit on a daily basis to enhance and empower not only our eternal relationship, but here it is, I'm going to make a turn, our social relationships. It's in the book, Ephesians 5, verse 21, submit yourselves to one another in the fear or reverence or awe of God. We're not only to enjoy a relationship with God, we have relationships with one another. Look around the room. We have relationships, connections, fellowships. You ought to have some people in the household of faith that you're close to, that you're building relationship with, that you have something in common with, because there will be times when life gets rough. How many of you know what I'm talking about? There will be times when your walk with God gets rough, when life happens and it comes at you quickly and you need reinforcements, you need backup. And so the Holy Spirit helps us build those relationships. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be a blessing and enables us to receive a blessing. Lord, have mercy. I'm to give a blessing and to be a blessing and to receive one at the same time. Don't miss this, that strife and bitterness and division are the telltale evidence that our spirit needs to be charged. When you find yourself negative, when you find yourself complaining, when you find yourself wanting to stay away from the people of God, the fellowship of God, you need to pull up and fill up. Mm -hmm. I'm preaching. That, that's the point of verses 22 through 25 in Ephesians chapter 5, he addresses husbands and wives. He's trying to address the subject of our domestic relationships. However, your home is structured, however, your family is comprised and composed, you still need daily to yield to the influence and sway of the Holy Spirit to live your best life together. Somebody say, I got to yield to the Spirit. And since we have a daily need of the presence, the power, and the filling of the Holy Spirit, it only makes sense that we would strive to make it a daily norm. Lord, fill me up. You ought to make it a part of your daily prayer. Lord, fill me up. Let your spirit lead me and guide me. Order my steps and direct my path. Lord, I don't have enough sense to know what to do. Lord, I need the help of your spirit. Because being filled with the spirit is to be the norm. Somebody say the norm for the person of faith. This is not just supposed to be a weekend explosion of ecstasy where we come and get our praise on. And we, no, no. You need it every day of the week. It is to be a daily norm of our regular activity. A continual filling implies something habitual and normal such that not being filled would be abnormal and atypical. Just as it's normal for us to breathe and move and function it should be normal for us to be filled with the spiritual power, the insight, and the grace of God on a daily basis. Vance Havner said that we live in such an abnormal Christian life that if we began to live a normal Christian life, people would think of us as abnormal. And this is both tragic but true. What we have poorly accepted as normal often falls beneath what God intends for our life. God intends for us to live a life of victory. It's not that we're always on the mountaintop. You can't live there. Pastor, why can't I live on the mountaintop? Be because between every mountaintop, there's a valley. <laughs> but we need to understand that God gives us power to get through the valley. God gives us power to serve. We were saved to serve. God gives us power to share. We were saved to share. God gives us power to sacrifice. We were saved to sacrifice. God gives us security. God gives us a shout. God gives us a shine. And God saves us to succeed by the grace of God. Often we only seek the power 
of the Holy Spirit when we face unique challenges and excruciating circumstances. But we need spiritual power every day and in everything. You know what's interesting? I thought about this. Some of us do our best praying when we're in trouble. Can I keep it real? We do our best praying because that's when we get serious. We'll, we'll even fast. It's not that we intend to fast. We forget to eat. <laughs> Something's on our mind. But why should we have to be in trouble to do our best praying? My God, we need the Holy Spirit in the ordinary and the original, in the regular and the irregular, on the mountaintops of success, in the valleys of failure, grappling with big things, struggling with small things. We need to be filled with God's Spirit. The idea is not to get ready, but to stay ready. Don't wait until your spiritual tank is on E and the dashboard lights are flashing low fuel. Instead, daily pull up. So you can fill up, pull into the filling station of eternity and ask God to fill you up, not by might, nor by power, but send your spirit, God, because I need more of the spirit of the Lord. That's why we're commanded to be filled. We have to continue to be filled because we have a daily need and we must make it our daily norm. My God, my God, first of all. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and that, depli- that implies that we need to be under the Spirit's control. Look at somebody and say, get under control. But the problem is you can't be full of self and be full of the Spirit at the same time. I'm almost done. But I need to say that again. You cannot be full of self and full of the Spirit at the same time. Because if you are full of you, it's impossible to be full of the Holy Spirit. And some of us sometimes want to tell one another, you're full of it, all right. <laughs> But it's not the Holy Spirit. The word rendered in our English text is fill means more than just filling up. The verb speaks of being under the control of or being dominated by something or someone. In John 16 and 6, we read of hearts being filled with sorrow. In Luke 5, 26, we read of people being filled with fear. In Luke 6 and 11, we read that they were filled with madness. In each of these cases, the verb is pointing to something that's controlling, dominating thoughts and actions and emotions. And the same principle applies here when we talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit. It is yielding to the control of the Holy Spirit. Because being filled with the Holy Spirit is so much more than an emotional experience. It is emotional, but it's more than emotion. Early on in my spiritual walk, I wanted that emotional shake. Have you ever seen the saints get a quickening? And I remember growing up in our household, me and my siblings could imitate anybody in the church. If you got, you know, if you got the spirit, if you start shouting and dancing and running, we could imitate you. We used to have fun doing it. And it makes me think of that story about Shirley Caesar, who she used to play church too. But one day, some of you have heard to tell the story that she got caught up in the spirit, got on her. And her sister ran and got her mama to see it, and her mama said, she ain't playing now. (laughs) The Holy Spirit is upon her. Can I get a witness? Because being filled with the Holy Spirit is allowing the Holy Spirit to take control, not just on Sunday in the sanctuary, but on Monday through Saturday as you live your life. A car needs a driver, a plane needs a pilot, a ship needs a captain, and Christ's followers need the Holy Spirit. I say all the time to people, who repeat that old bumper sticker theology that said, God is my co-pilot. You seen that bumper sticker? License plate that says, God is my co-. I say, God shouldn't be your co-anything. You should get out of the driver's seat and let God pilot all by God's self. The songwriter was on point when he wrote this, you have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase. You have earnestly, fervently prayed, but you cannot have rest. And be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. And that sweet refrain, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Is your, your heart does the spirit control? You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body. And so the issue is control. Somebody say control. Do you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Then yield him your life. Absolutely, totally. Let him be in control. That's what it means to be in alignment so you can get on assignment. I surrender all to you, Lord. Everything I have to you. Here it is withholding nothing. I give myself away. 
so you can use me. That's the song of invitation today. King Jesus, my Savior forever, I give you all. Anybody here ready to give God all of you? Pastor, you said you're going to tell us how to pull up and fill up. Well, it starts by giving God all. Lord, another week, and I'm going to resign as the head of my life. I'm going to resign as the CEO. I'm going to, Lord, confess I don't have enough sense to make good decisions. <laughs> I need you to help me. I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me every step of the way. Lord, help me. Help me to surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender all to him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. Live. I surrender all. But how many of you know you have to do it over and over again as the musicians begin to play that song, I give myself away. I wonder if there's anybody here today who would say, Pastor, I, I need to do it. I've done it before, but I need to do it again. If that's you, as we stand all over the sanctuary with our heads bowed, my first call is for the, someone today who has not met Jesus Christ as Savior. As the mission team joins me, we open our arms, we open our hearts for those who need to make a decision today, who do not know Jesus as Savior. Maybe you're backslidden, you drifted away. Maybe you want to recommit, rededicate your life. Maybe you're without a church family, church home. The first call is to you, but then there are others today. You hear the call of God to be filled. You, you hear it because you understand now, I need to pull up and fill up. If there are those enough honest to say, Pastor, I've been trying to do God's work on my own. I've, I've, I'm flirting with burnout. I'm exhausted. I want you to come quickly to this altar that I might pray with us as a group. I give myself. I'm emptying myself of me so that I can be filled with you, Lord. Yes, I give. I give myself away. So you can use me. So you can use me. That's all it is. I give. Give myself away. Yes. Oh, Lord. Yes, I give. Let's say this, my life.
myself away. Oh, I give myself away. spirit in this house. God, we thank you for the ministry here at the altar. We thank you for those who came, Lord. As we stand, as we lift our hands, saying, Lord, fill me. Fill me up, Lord, till I overflow. God, I pray even now that as I, as I pray, as we connect with heaven, that we would experience that feeling of fresh and anew, God. We just thank you for what you're doing in this moment. We give you praise for it. As we give you the reins of our lives, as Lord, afresh in the news, Lord, we say, lead me, guide me, order my steps, direct my, give me wisdom in my relationships. Give me wisdom in my decision making. Give me wisdom in my household. Give me wisdom in my finances. Give me wisdom in my walk with you. Give me discipline, Lord. I thank you for filling me up afresh in the news. I give you glory, I give you praise, and I give you honor in Jesus' name. Somebody help me call that name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen and amen. Come on, all over this house, give God praise. Give God glory. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And there are those here for further ministry. There are going to be some members of our mission team, ministers, missionaries who will be to my right and to your left, ready to minister with you further after the service is concluded. At this time, we're going to prepare to worship the Lord with our gifts. Praise the Lord. It's offering time. Come on and give God praise. Praise the Lord. It's offering time. We thank God for the opportunity to worship the Lord with our gifts. All the ways that you can give are on the screen, and we are grateful and thankful. We're excited for the privilege to partner with God. How many of you have noticed the, the, the progress on the construction project outside? Would you put your hands together and give God praise for an answer to prayer? Come on and thank God. We thank God for the work that's being done, the work that's going forward. We thank God for your generosity, for your support. The ushers are in the aisles to serve you if you're in need of an envelope. For those who would like to give here in person, we ask you to lift your hands and they will serve you. I am grateful and thankful for those of you who are using all of the platforms that we have to give subs, blast, credit cards on file, bank pay, bill pay. We give God praise for all of the methods, even mailing your gifts. We give God praise for you and for what you do to empower the ministry of Jesus Christ through this local fellowship. Amen. I ran across a quote this morning that I wanted to share with you. It says, when someone helps you and they are struggling too, that's not help, that's love. Let me read that one again. When someone helps you and they are struggling too, that's not help, that's love. Anybody ever experienced that kind of love? You know that somebody reached out to help you, they took time with you and they really didn't have it to give it. How many of you know that? If you know that was love, repeat after me. That's love. God, we thank you for your love today. The love that caused you to send your only begotten son, Jesus, to the cross. We thank you that, God, you so loved the world that you gave what was most precious to you, your only son. And I thank you for being reminded this morning that we are never more like you than when we give and when we forgive. Lord, as we lift our hands in your presence, as we prepare to return your tithe, to give our offerings, to sow our seeds, to give of our abundance and our overflow, God, I thank you for the lives that are touched and changed each week through the food pantry, through the outreach ministries. I thank you for the congregation that makes this possible. We thank you for your love, unconditional. We thank you for your love, unquestionable. We thank you for the love that sent Jesus to Calvary. We give you praise. 
We ask now, Lord, that you bless both the gift and the giver, for it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. And every heart said, would you stand one more time and come under the direction of the ushers from the rear as we worship the Lord with our gifts this morning? Let's worship. Amen. Jehovah, Jireh, my provider, that's what he is to me. Jehovah, Jireh, my provider, yeah. That's what he is to me. Help me say, Jehovah, Jireh, my provider. That's what he is. That's what he is to me. Jehovah, Jireh, my provider. That's what he is. That's what he is to me. Jehovah, Jireh, my provider. That's what They are also on the Bible Way app and on the website as well. And uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to prepare to, to leave today. And again, for those that came to the altar uh, for ministry, said we will have uh, some folks here on the side of the pulpit if you need resources as well as referrals for any of those issues. We want to make sure that we provide you with that information on today. So let us look to the Lord. Father God, we just thank you for the time that we have had on today, O oh God. Father God, we just thank you for blessing us, blessing this place, blessing the man of God that had bought a blessed word, O oh God. And now, Father God, as we prepare to leave this place, we pray that we never leave your presence, O oh God. And we just want to continue to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Father God. Fill us up, Father God, with the Holy Spirit, O oh God. And as we are filled, it's for the journey ahead, Heavenly Father, that we may share your word, your grace, and your love with someone that does not know you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace. Go in peace and have a great week. And have a great week. Wasn't that a powerful message? Hebrews 4, 16 reminds us that we can approach God's throne of grace with confidence, where we can find mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. My name is Elder Tanetta Collins, and I am a member of the pastoral team here at Bible Way Ministries. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation, felt touched by today's message, and would like prayer, or have a special need, we have a team of people ready and willing to pray with you. If you are viewing the live stream on the website or Bible Way app, you can click live prayer on the bottom right of your screen or click the prayer request link at the header of the website. If you are viewing us from one of our social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, or catching the replay, please visit our website, bwmi.faith. Again, that's bwmi.faith. And click the word prayer in the header to join us in one of our scheduled prayer times or complete the prayer request form for a member of our trained staff to intercede with and for you. Lastly, we want to connect with you. Salvation, membership, 
or simply rededication, we are available to you. On our website, under the About header, you can find more information under Next Steps, again, the About header, Next Steps, where we invite you to join in with us. Become a member of the Bible Way family. There is a place for you here at Bible Way. I'm excited with what God is doing in your life. In some cases, it may not seem like much right now, but God is at work in you, through you, and all around you. Be encouraged, and we look to see you again next week. Stay tuned. There is no way like the Bible way. I can't compromise now. I got too much ahead of me. God, you got too much, and the best for me is yet to come. Everybody needs to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Somebody